Hey guys and girls, just a quick one. I've uh, got an inverter here, it's one I'm trying to repair. Um, it, had a, it had a bank of really bad capacitors in there. Um, along the bottom down there, they were some, uh, what do you call it? 1,500 microfarads, that I think were 25 volts and they'd all gone, uh, you know, blown up to the max, uh, which I thought was leading the problem. And uh, yeah, I replaced all those on it, but now it's coming up saying there's an overload protection. And it'll do that without any load plugged into it at all. And I've tried disconnecting the little, um, there's like a little uh, loop which, uh, which picks up on how many amps it's drawing. I've tried disconnecting the loop uh, to see if I can fool it into not reading anything. Sadly that didn't work. Um, and I've tried a few other things. Just got it hooked up to a vacuum cleaner. I know it's not ideal, but it'll do. Uh, well, first of all, I'll disconnect it and I'll show you what it does with it off. Sorry about the car noise, it's uh, got, the, got it running just to show that it's producing enough voltage. Car alternator is producing 13.8 volts, um, obviously it's about 60 amps. The battery on the car is fully charged. Uh, a solid, well, different lights indicate different things. Uh, and on this one, if it's a solid status light red, it means it's overload, the overload protectors come on to play and can kick the inverter off. Now obviously as you can see there's nothing plugged into the thing so I'll turn it on and you'll see what it does. It goes through the testing stage. It's saying load levels very high and it kicks off saying that it's too good, you know it's too high and it's shut the inverter down. Now I can't for the love of me figure out where the overload circuit is on this because if I could find it I'd just disable it completely because it doesn't really need one because this thing is only designed to drive a small fridge uh, which only which only does a surge of about 1500 uh, watts and then it kicks it down to whatever. Now um, I've, this is the cable that the uh, the thing goes into. I'll turn the inverter off. This is the cable that the um, the wire, the, you know, the loop goes into, so to speak, which detects how many amps it's drawing. And I've had that unplugged, and then we'll unplug it again. Like that. We'll try it back again. Now, the thing is, it will make the Hoover fire up, but then it detects it's over -volting. Next one, another noise. And it will just kick it off again. Nope, not going to have it. No matter what you do, it won't. Uh, also, on this, if you disconnect the uh, the loop, it disables the bloody fans, which is a bit naff. Because the fans come on load dependent. So it's obviously that circuit that's messing about. I'll plug the Uber in and I'll show you what it does with the Uber plugged in, even though you could probably guess. You should be able to hear it running. So the Hoover's plugged in now. Clever boys turn the Hoover off. There you go, as you can hear it's just shut down again because it's too over -volting. I'll reset it again and show you again. Hoover's on already. Apparently we're over vaulting it, you know, sorry, over, over, overloading it. Which I can't see how, because it's telling me that the load level, just then, hadn't got any problems. Because when that goes red and that goes red, that's telling you that the load level is way over the top. And it is flashing red, which does mean it is apparently over. Also now the fans won't come on as well. No, it's got nothing plugged into it. As you can see, fans aren't coming on. So it's detecting that there's no overload there, which is interesting because the fans aren't coming on now. But when you plug the Uber in, the fans do come on. 
can hear it pulling all, uh, amps from the alternator. But then it cuts off. So does anybody know how I can fix this bloody thing? I've had the window inverters come to me with this exact same fault where they'll come on but then the overload protector kicks in and that's it. And every time I've just said, oh I can't fix it, you know, it's the one fault I can ever do. So if anybody knows how to fix this bloody problem with them, it's a pain in the arse, you know, these inverters. Personally I absolutely hate the high frequency ones, give me a low frequency inverter any day, but, you know, they're, easy, they're more easy to fix. But yeah, if anybody knows how I can you know, get this thing sorted out, please let me know. Thank you guys and girls. Peace out and I'll catch you on the next video.